Hello there, lovely salt people. Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. And in this video we are going to have a look at some tournament footage from a tournament we held back in March to test our own developed rule set. So this video will consist out of three parts. First, I will talk about the rule set itself. Then you can have a look at the tournament footage, which uh, recorded Stefan as a fighter in the very small side sword tournament and with me as a judge. I added hit markers to that footage, but I don't comment it on directly, so you can replay uh, the footage as you'd like. And then after that, I'll comment on Stefan's performance and what he might uh, be able to improve for the next tournament. Okay, so let's get right into the first part. The rule set we developed uh, is based on actually the Bolognese sources, especially Antonio Manchelino. So there are two parts we took from Manchelino and that's the, um, the scoring. So usually tournaments have some weighted scoring and Manchelino gives us a scoring card basically uh, in that he writes that he gives three points for any blow to the head because it's such a great target and such a noble target. Then there are two points for the feet, which we actually made to uh, knees and chin because feet are usually unprotected because it's a difficult target to reach and everything else is just one point. So that's the first part. And the second part is the after blow rule in that uh, Manchelino and actually the Anonimo as well describe that after you receive a hit in play, you're allowed to make one repost with a maximum of one step to regain your honor. So that's basically the rule uh, we had in play, which actually allows for a quite long after blow, but also a big incentive to uh, make your hit and then just get out of the way, okay? Then on top of that, you might know that I'm a behavioral economist, so um, I usually deal with uh, systems that should be incentive compatible. And the incentives I wanted to set were that everyone should fence in a way that leaves them uh, themselves as little open to opponent's hit as possible. So really focusing on the not getting hit part of our martial art and only then uh, dealing hits, right? So what I did with the rule set was uh, something based on another rule set that's also quite prominent in, in Germany, which is called Hadak. And that's um, having like a lot of uh, pairings. So the tournament was actually held in a round robin style, but it could be uh, also be done in pools as well. And then uh, per pairing, per fight, there's a fixed number of exchanges. So it's the first important thing. There's a fixed number of exchanges. And to get to a good ranking, so the pool ranking will be determined by basically three stages. And the first and most important stage is how many exchanges did you accomplish to finish unscathed? So uh, without receiving a hit, basically. So if you, for example, double your way through the tournament and even if you get uh, at all times a head hit for yourself and just get uh, tagged in the legs or in the hands on your way out, then you would rank really low in this setting because actually just any fighter who managed to go for one exchange where they finished by dealing a hit without getting one would be placed in a higher ranking. Okay, that's the first and most important rule. So, and if two fighters or more have the same number of um, healthy or unscathed ex uh, exchanges, then we count the points. So the three for the head, the two for the lower legs and the one for everything else basically. And if there's an equilibrium between more fighters again, then we count the head hits. And for the pool ranking, if there's still any one there is which have 
the same amount of numbers of uh, exchanges and the same, uh, the same amount of points and the same amount of headheads, then it's just a coin toss basically. But for finals, we'll actually just uh, go to a sudden death and fight another exchange. Okay, and what changes in this rule set? Well, since you're not uh, only fighting in a direct comparison, so most tournaments, use, most tournaments usually fight a higher number of bouts because you don't want to play randomness such a big role in comparing two fighters. But then again, uh, since we usually count points upwards, there's an incentive if you have a lead, so if you have the first uh, point lead, that you double your way through or that you waste time or anything like this. And in this setting we developed here, there's actually none such an incentive because if you double, then you will be worse off than before, for example, because you just got another exchange where you got hit, okay? And since the total number of exchanges where you don't got hit gets counted, um, every, exchange is in, every exchange in itself counts. So that's also uh, the, the part where it's important to have a fixed number of exchanges per fight. Okay, so enjoy the uh, tournament footage and then I'll see you again. Hello, fertig, los! Alles 
von links nach rechts zur Hand, von rechts nach links, Oberschenkel irgendwas, 1, 1. Stellung, okay. fertig, los. Okay, so welcome back. First off, congrats to Stefan for taking bronze. There were seven participants total in the tournament and first off there was a round robin, so each fighter fenced against everyone else. And there was uh, between the final four, so the top four, there were semi-finals and then the uh, small and the big final. Okay, so three tips for Stefan. Well, the first thing that uh, struck me was that oftentimes the hand was really, really high. So there were a lot of motions like where he tried to go for the opponent's hands, but left his own hand in the way as a target as well. So, and there he got uh, punished for it quite often, especially with thrusts to the hand 
or like uh, small cuts or something like this. Or even if the opponents uh, did go in, they often used this uh, forward head for a wrestling action to bind it away. Okay, that's the first time. Usually, uh, the first thing we usually see in the Bolognese sources where they advise us to stand in strette guards. So basically in guards where the hand is low, cl very close to the knee, it's forward, the point is usually forward, but close to the knee and low um, really removes it from the danger of exposing it to opposing cuts, falsi and thrusts. Because if the opponent goes that low, then you can easily block parry and they need to go get in close so you're probably already uh, very close to get your own counter in then as well. Okay, so get your hands low. The next and second part or tip advice I would give is to uh, move with a bit more purpose and not hesitate that much. So there, were, there was a lot of probing which isn't actually a bad thing per se because you can scout the opponent's movement, movements and then develop your own game plan, especially in a system where you have uh, a low number of exchanges per opponent. So that's not usually a bad thing. But if you're going in and if you are striking, you should actually have a plan. So actually it should be like really a feint where you're like completely safe or you should go in uh, get your advantage of position and of timing and then abuse that advantage until you get the hit and then get out of course. So that's a that's the second part and the third tip which is probably somewhat correlated uh, to the second bit is that especially cuts from positions where the hand is already quite advanced and high uh, and the tips pointing forward are usually quite weak and have the tendency also if you just flick the wrist that you most often than, more often than not um, turn them just on the flat. So there's an opportunity to work on proper striking mechanics which will make your cuts, strikes, attacks uh, in general much more dangerous um, because they can also more easily displace the opponent's blade and then for you to go in and anything like this. And I think there was a motion two or three times with the hand really high and where the point just dropped like a couple of centimeters to then go into the direction of the opponent's arm which is which can be a good blow if you like have a nice little pre uh, preparatory motion but if you just let the point drop this is this gets really sketchy all of a sudden okay and fourth and last tip would be to not overreach with the especially with the upper body always support your your balance your your upper structures by proper footwork and not just overreach because then again cuts, strikes, everything basically becomes really sketchy because if it doesn't land then you're probably in a really really bad position leaving yourself open for wrestling or just to get uh, the counter right afterwards. Just to leave on a good uh, something good there were, were a lot of good of uh, lots of good actions which Stefan pulled off especially going towards the wrists and the hands with uh, rising strikes was really a plus and I hope to see that more of him but also to get really get these uh, good binding mechanics in after a strike not hesitating and purposefully getting in there with thrust that is what I would like to see more of in the future. Okay so I hope this was useful for you as well and until next time, take care and ciao.